And in two days from now, the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is going to be speaking and going to be raising interest rates. Now, it's not a matter of if he's going to be raising interest rates. It's going to be the matter of how much is he going to be raising interest rates. Now, over the past two weeks, we saw a dramatic turn in the market. And this dramatic turn happened once the unexpected happened. The unexpected happened while inflation didn't continue to fade but it actually rose up 0.1%. In August, we saw that inflation was declining and every single trader, every single firm, Wall Street, they all expected by coming up to this interest rate meeting that we were going to see Jerome Powell come out and talk about raising interest rates only 0.5%. People were excited, people were happy, people were saying to themselves, wow, we have the markets climbing on up, we just came off uh, a intr- we just came off inflation data that showed that inflation was falling. We're seeing gas prices fall, and once that inflation data came out last week, guess what? The entire market started crashing all the way back on down. You can also see right here the fear and greed index. Fear is very high at this moment, and as fear is up, the market heads on down. So why did this market drop? Well, because inflation is still rising. We're still not fighting inflation as hard as we can. Now, it is down from its record highs in June. It is down from 9.1%, but we are not where we want to be. So the moment that we saw that, everyone got scared and started selling their positions. Everyone got scared and started doing put contracts. The market made a dramatic downturn. We saw that we broke underneath this uh, uptrend that has been holding for the last four months, and we are currently sitting at this moment right around 385. Now you might be saying, hey, we have a bounce play today. We have a nice green candle today. And the reason why we have a bounce play, the reason why we have a nice green candle is because that 380 mark is exactly at the 20% drop of 2022. We were all the way up towards around the highs of, uh, in 2022, where were we at? That three, uh, 479-ish mark coming up towards around 480. And once we go down more than 20% in the stock market from its highest point, that is where we're considered in a bear market. So you can see right here, US stocks are measured by the benchmark S&P 500 index. Once you fall more than 20%, that is where you are considered in a bear market. So this 380 mark is kind of the guardian of the gates of going into a bear market, which is why when we came down to 385, we bounced on up. And when we came on down towards 380, we had a big bounce on up. And then we came underneath 380, and now we're in a bear market, and now it holds up as resistance. And guess what's happening now? We are pounding on the doors of going back into a bear market. You can see that the S&P 500, we take a look at the year to date, we're currently down 19.43%, and that's when we're at 3 384. So when we came down this morning to the price on the S&P 500, down towards around 381, 382, traders are saying, hey, we know we have very strong support at that nice 20% bear market kind of gate area, which is why traders are trying to make sure we don't go back into that 20% mark. The thing that you must understand is we are not going to be getting much movement for the next two days straight. Monday, today, we're going to be back up to 385, maybe see some 383s. Maybe we go back to 386, maybe we sit right at 384. Tomorrow, the S&P 500, maybe 384, maybe some 386s. Maybe a low touch of 381, maybe back up to 383. We're not going to see too much movement. I sent this out to every single trader that's part of TradeCaster this morning that says September 21st, we're seeing if we're going to be raising interest rates 0.75% or a full percentage point. uh, 0.75% is not good in any way. That's the third 0.75 rate hike, but it's what we're expecting. And when you tell people, even if it's bad news that you're expecting it, at least they're prepared for it, right? Let's just imagine this, and I know again, it's like dark examples, but let's just imagine it in this way. Let's imagine a huge hurricane, a category five, as big as we've ever seen, is coming towards Florida. And you know what? The Florida governor says, hey, guys, we have a huge hurricane coming. We want you guys to be prepared. Please evacuate. Or if you guys want to stay, you know, please make sure you're in high rise buildings, whatever it may be. Yes, there will be panic. But at the same time, it gives them time to be able to prepare. People are going to know what's on the horizon. And when a hurricane happens, is it scary? Sure. But at the same time, we know it's coming. 
Now imagine it was just an absolute beautiful day and a category five hurricane just popped out of nowhere without any sort of, um, without any sort of preparation in any way. Imagine what it would be like there. It would be a completely different world, a lot more trouble. So in this rate, what do we have? 0.75 interest rate hikes are not good, but at least it's giving traders time to prepare for it. And if 0.75 rate hikes happen, that could still raise the market on up because at least people are saying, phew, at least it's not a whole percentage point. If again, it is a whole percentage point, that's the unexpected. That's like sitting out on a beach and all of a sudden looking out and saying, what the heck, is that a tsunami wave on the way? You know, that's just something that's, you know, completely unexpected for anyone, right? And that's where there's a lot more damage. So the thing is, looking at the S&P 500, we cracked this four month high. We are now sitting down towards around the 20% bear market area. And the expected is 0.75, even though it's not good, the unexpected is going to be a full percentage point. If we see a full percentage point hit, I'm thinking we go back down towards the 360s or 370s. If we have a 0.75, I think we move back up towards around 395. Now, what's also very crazy at this moment, traders, is if we take a look at this market, we have a lot of amazing opportunities at this time. Take a look at Google. Google is at a 52-week low today. Or excuse me, it was on Friday, getting pretty close. Maybe a low uh, by you know later on this afternoon. But if you buy Google right now, you are buying it almost at the lowest point of the entire year. That's a pretty fantastic opportunity. If you go ahead and you take a look at all these plays, NVDA, NVDA, you are buying NVDA at almost the lowest point in this entire year. There's really only been one or two blue chips that have been able to hold their gains. What stock has been able to hold its gains better than the rest? And that play honestly has been Tesla. Tesla is still actually climbing. And that is concerning, but it's also kind of just so Tesla of it, isn't it? It's so Tesla to just be like, hey, yeah, everything's falling. I think I'm just going to go up, right? Tesla is still climbing. Tesla's still trying to make a move. No, I will say no matter what. If Fed's interest rates are 0.75%, Tesla's going to come down no matter what. It will come down on Wednesday if it's a full percentage point. But it's just funny right here how Tesla is just being so Tesla right here. If we take a look at the stock market, we see the S&P 500 has been falling. We take a look at Google. We see that Google has been just absolutely getting killed. We take a look at NVDA. NVDA has been taking a look. And then we take a look at Tesla. And Tesla's just like looking around just saying, what's going on here? You ever see... um? You ever uh, just see like those weather reports before and it'll be like the weatherman, he'll be standing there holding his hat. He'll be like, we've never seen winds like this in any sort of way. And, and, and no one's out here. It's too dangerous. And you just see like someone like walk by like perfectly casually, you know, walking their dog in the background and the weatherman's just like making a huge scene. That's Tesla right now. Tesla is just, you know, the, just, hey, it's a little wet out there, but you know what? Well, uh, dog's got to go to the bathroom. I'm not going to again, let him go in the house. Right, so Tesla is probably the strongest play at the moment out of them all, but it does come down to, hey, let's see what happens over on Wednesday. I'm very excited to see what these interest rates are going to be. And even if we have 0.75, which is the likelihood, I would say there's a 70% chance of 0.75, 0.3% of whole percentage points. And depending on what happens, that's going to be the next move on the market. All right, so take this, understand it, and get ready for Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern time or 11 o'clock West Coast time is the time that you want to be watching. S&P 500 going to have a dramatic move.